OK, so we're going to solve this equation. We need to find all complex numbers z which satisfy this equation. And if we look closely, there's actually quite a nice observation we can make which we can help us to get started. So the left-hand side is the absolute value of some complex number. So we know that this has got to be real. Then on the right-hand side, this term has also got to be real. This is the absolute value of a complex number. And that means that we've got a real number is equal to something plus another real number. That means that our something here has also got to be real. So this tells us then that z plus 1i has got to be real. So if we write z as x plus y times i, where x and y are real numbers, we split it up into its real and imaginary parts. And this tells us that z plus 1i is written as x plus yi plus 1 times i, which gives us x plus 1i is minus y. And we know that z plus 1i has got to be real. So this means that our imaginary part has got to be 0. So this tells us then that x plus 1 has to be 0. And we know then that x has got to be equal to minus 1. So this is quite a nice start to the problem. We can see that the real part of our complex number z has always got to be minus 1. So we can say that z is of the form minus 1 plus y times i, where y can still be any real number. So let's just substitute this into the original equation now. Then we've reduced it to solving an equation for a real number. So substituting in minus 1 plus yi, we have the absolute value of minus 1 plus yi minus absolute value of minus 1 plus, and we'll call it y plus 1i, and the extra plus i term there. And all of this is equal to z plus 1 times i is just yi times i, so minus y. Then the absolute value of z plus 1, this is the absolute value of minus 1 plus yi plus 1, so the absolute value of yi, or just the absolute value of y. Now from here we could just brute force the rest of the problem using the definition of the absolute value of complex numbers. This is going to make the algebra really quite tricky, so we'll take a slightly more nuanced approach here. What we're going to do is we will expand the definition of the absolute value of this thing on the left hand side, but I'm just going to write this informally, it's going to be the square root of some stuff, so the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared on the left hand side. What I'll do is I'll add a y to the left hand side as well, so this square root, this absolute value plus y is now just equal to the absolute value of y. Okay, so to get rid of the absolute value of y, this isn't very nice to have, what we can do now is square both sides. So then just again writing this informally, you have the square root of some stuff squared plus 2 times y times the square root of this stuff plus y squared is equal to, so the modulus of y squared gives you just y squared. So you can see here the two y squareds cancel, which is nice. And then what we'll do is we'll take this 2y times the square root onto the left hand side, which gives us this square root squared is equal to minus 2y times the square root. So here there's a nice little approach we can take again to save a bit of effort. So you can see here this is definitely greater than or equal to 0, and so is this square root here. So this tells you that in order for minus 2y times something positive to give us something positive, minus 2y has got to be greater than or equal to 0 itself. So this is really useful now because this tells us that y has got to be less than or equal to 0 in order for minus 2y to be greater than or equal to 0. So this is really useful actually because now in order to get rid of the absolute value of y here, instead of having to square, we can just replace absolute value of y by minus y. And then crucially minus y plus the absolute value of y on the right hand side, we can just replace this with minus 2y. So this is going to make our next calculations much, much simpler. So now we're ready to expand this left-hand side. So to find the modulus of this, we need to write this as the real part and the imaginary part. So the real part is going to be minus 1 minus the modulus of this term. So we're going to square this. So we can replace this. Instead of having the two negatives, we'll write it as 1 plus. Then the modulus of all of this is the square root of the real part in here squared, which is just 1. And then the square of the imaginary part, 1 plus y plus 1 all squared in a square root, then all of this squared was our real part underlined here squared, then we need to plus the imaginary part y squared, so plus y squared, and this is equal to minus 2y. What we'll do next is just square both sides, which gives us 1 plus the square root of 1 plus y plus 1 squared, all squared, plus y squared is now equal to 4y squared. So we'll get 3y squared when we take away y squared from both sides here is equal to 
1 plus root 1 plus y plus 1 all squared. So the next thing we're actually going to do here is take square roots of both sides. And this is especially nice because we know that y can't be positive. So when we take the square root on the left hand side, we get something positive 1 plus root 1 plus y plus 1 squared. Then instead of having to have plus or minus here, we know that we only actually get one solution where y is negative. So you get minus root 3 y is equal to this. So this is especially nice. We've done the hard work already determining that y is less than 0. So we don't need to have two solutions here. So what we can do now is we'll take the 1 over onto the right hand side and square. So you get 1 plus y plus 1 all squared by squaring. Then this is equal to minus root 3 y minus 1, all squared. What we can do now is we'll expand all of this, we'll get a quadratic which we can solve in y, so you get y squared plus 2y plus 2 is equal to 3y squared, and it's going to be plus 2 root 3y plus 1. We'll take everything onto the right hand side, set this equal to 0, you get 2y squared, and it's plus 2 root 3 minus 1y, and finally minus 1. What we'll do as well is we'll divide through by 2 just to make life easier for ourselves. So 0 is now equal to y squared plus root 3 minus 1y minus a half. And now we can just finish off with the quadratic formula. So we know that y is going to be equal to minus b, so minus root 3 minus 1 in brackets, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so root 3 minus 1 all squared, minus 4 times 1 times minus a half, so plus 2. All of this divided by 2a, so just divided by 2 here. So this gives us a minus root 3 minus 1 all over 2, plus or minus. When we square all of this, we get a 3, a 1, and a 2, so it's the square root of 6 minus 2 root 3. All of this divided by 2. So now here, minus root 3 minus 1, this is around minus 0.7. And here the square root of 6 minus 2 root 3, this is around the square root of 2.5, it's about 1.5. So if you do minus 0.7 plus 1.5, you get something positive, but we know that y has got to be less than or equal to 0. So this rules out the positive square root. Then we can conclude that our only valid value of y then is minus root 3 minus 1 minus the square root of 6 minus 2 root 3, all divided by 2. So this isn't our full solution, don't forget we were solving for z, a complex number, so we can tell them that z is going to be minus 1, and I'll write this as minus root 3 minus 1 plus the square root of 6 minus 2 root 3, all of this divided by 2 times i.